Hello and welcome to V Podcast. For the past many days, we have been listening to the impact of the lockdown, activities that can be taken up, ways to take care of our physical, emotional, and spiritual health, how we can turn to nature, time management, and have heard about perspectives gained during the COVID-19 scenario. We have grown in our knowledge of homemade food, home remedies, and today have greater awareness of our immediate surroundings. As the effects of the lockdown slowly recede, as we start looking forward to returning to normalcy, other major concerns come to the fore. Economy, politics, financial and industrial sectors, the nation's progress, the changing demographics, travel, migration, and other such matters. Today, let us listen to Dr. Sneha Gopi Krishna, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, as she shares her take on the post-COVID-19 economy. Hello everyone. We are all in a very stressful and panic situation where each day is witnessed as something which is unpredictable. The COVID pandemic that initially led to the global health crisis has certainly grew rapid enough to shatter the social and economic fabric. This is a period of total loss. A loss in terms of life, financial stability and security. The worst part of the situation is that hardly anyone can be blamed and nowhere to abscond. All over the world as we see from political leaders, administrative heads of various countries, financial experts, to that of the general public, irrespective of religion, caste, creed and sex, have been hit hard by the trauma of fear and uncertainty. And you know why? It's because of the simple fact that nobody really knows what will be the state of affairs the next day. Global economy looks a gloomy picture. Globalization, the epitome of economic and social integration of national economies to enhance the flow of trade and capital across nation borders has buried itself. Dear friends, at this juncture, I would like to make you understand that we are all witnessing a great leap backward from a globalized world to a regionalized world. See, where do you find open economies now? Every economy have become closed. For India, the case is even more severe. Before the rise of the pandemic, the Indian economy was suffering from the twin blows of demonetization and new tax regime. This was accompanied by the collapse of shadow banking credit the year before. In the backdrop of the poor GDP growth rate, acute problems and challenges such as lack of infrastructure, corruption, poverty still lies behind the curtain. Adding fuel to fire especially after globalization, 
there has been a great neglect of the growth of primary and secondary sectors. It was otherwise misinterpreted that focus on the tertiary sector, that is the service sector alone, would gear up the economy in terms of competitions at the international level. This actually gave only a peripheral growth. Now, situation has come to the extent that forces us to go back and prove our mettle in the fields, barren lands and vacant plots. A going back to the saying evidently seen in old Indian economy readings that agriculture is the backbone of the country. This indicates that we need to start from scratch. Complementing farming and cultivation, manufacturing sector need to be geared up, reviving major industries, especially the agro-based industries, with the help of pump priming measures by the government. Towards this, daily wage earners could be absorbed because we see that they are the suffering lot in these pandemic days. Adequate training, providing work shifts and safe distancing gives it a practical viability. Slowly, the issues of unemployment could be sorted out and the trust of the workforce could be re-established. The Kerala model need to be made a special mention for its initiation of cultivation right from households. Dear friends, wherever it is, the quality of households kickstarts the process of development. When each household exhibits their quality of life, enhance their quality of life, and ensure their quality of life, this would trigger each region, locality, state, countries to re-establish their economic identity and milestone. It is indeed a pathetic circumstance that man has been proven to be nothing, just like any other species on earth. And the only thing that makes us go on is none other than hope. Friends, never leave that hope. Stay safe, be safe. Thank you. It is true that significant, thoroughly deliberated and discussed measures need to be implemented to bring the economy back on track. Thank you, Sneha Ma'am, for presenting such a clear picture of how COVID-19 has affected the economy and what lies ahead.